in the days of Owu. Find out the reason why the king of Owu decided to use Inkan, Ibadan king's daughter, as a sacrifice to a river goddess. You can also find out how Ibadan was able to save the whole of Yoruba land from destruction. After some years of hiding, Lagelu and his family came down from the Okibadon hill and soon there was influx of people from Yoruba tribes such as Isheri, Ijebu, Old Oyo and Ife. During this period, Lagelu has gone the way of his ancestors. One of the major settlers is Owu that had to abandon their land due to the slave market conflict between them and allied armies of Ife and the Jebus. The ruler of Ebadon decided to make a friendly gesture to the Owus by giving Inkan his princess to the Owu king, Olowu Akinjobi. They married and one day, Olowu Akinjobi decided to go on one of his raids so he could get some slaves to sell. Inkan, his new queen begged him to let her follow him and he agreed. The raid was a great success. They took many slaves and livestock and lost none of their soldiers. But as they were coming back, some historians will say they need to cross River Oba, while others say it is Ocean River. But history agrees that they needed to cross a river that was overflooded and will never come down no matter how long they waited. So Lugu working Jobi consulted the oracle and the oracle told him that they need to appease the river with something. Olowu then decided to use some goats and fowl for the sacrifice, but still the river won't come down, so he used all the livestock and some slaves, but still there was no changes. He then became angry and threatened the priest, still they later realized that the river is asking for something which is Ibado King's daughter. Akin Jobi has to go home, so Nkan was sacrificed. And when they got home, he lied that she was killed at war. But somehow, the secret was leaked. Owu was big and so powerful for a Badon ruler to fight alone. So he called for help from Ijebu and Oyo. An allied army led by Maye Ukwade and Lakuli was formed, and the war drove starts it. Despite the powerful force of the Allied Army, one day this war entered a battle and scattered it. Though the Allied Army won. The war marked the end of Ebadon the second time. Olowu Akinjobi committed suicide to avoid being captured, and Owu was never a single city again. Very soon, Oyoili was also destroyed by the raging forces of the Fulanis, and the king Olowu was captured and put to death. A new site was then selected for Oyo further south by Atiba and they called it Oyo Atiba which is the existing Oyoti today. Some of the Oyoili refugees settled with him there while others with the remnants of the Roaring Ibadan. He then named Ebaudon Ibadan and made Oluyoli the ruler of Ibadan. So we have the first Ulubadan as Oluyoli. The life of Bashonu Oluyoli was cut short and this brought a kind of republic where access to office and promotion was no longer by bed, but by merit in war, and also where war spoils are shared among the warriors accordingly. So this attracted war-loving and energetic people all over Yoruba land to seek a career in war. During this period, the Fulani jihadists have almost taken all the northern areas of Yoruba land and a lot of refugees poured into Ibadan because of this. This time, Ibolo, now named Oshun, was under attack. Ibadan army faced the Fulani army 
and defeated them at the first phase of the wars in Oshogo in 1840. This defeat broke the might of Fulani invincibility, and this way, the Fulani war stopped, and the Bato also emerged the leading power in the whole of Yoruba land. If you have any question about this book, please ask. I will reply you as soon as possible. And you can also make me happy and do more by giving an encouraging comment and subscribing. Thanks.